We're here with another episode of Before You Buy. It's actually a really busy end of January 2018. Today we're talking about Monster Hunter World, a game that finally looks more westernized compared to previous entries as a way to potentially bring in newcomers to this famously complicated and really challenging series. But thankfully, it doesn't seem to lose its identity along the way. Now I say that, but for transparency's sake, I've never really been a diehard Monster Hunter fan. I've played a few, but they just never clicked with me. I'm sure if you're a fan of the series, you probably just clicked off the video, sorry. But I gotta say, Monster Hunter World does its job. It finally got its hooks in me, but still feels like a deep and uncompromising Monster Hunter game, 100%. Oh, and I want to say right off the bat, I say this for a lot of my Before You Buy videos, but it's especially strong here. This is a game for certain tastes. If you don't like the game, that's okay. Your reason might be completely valid. This is a game for a very specific type of player who possibly wants something different out of a game over someone else. Its quirks are going to turn a lot of people off, but some are going to fall in love if they haven't already. Monster Hunter World can look really chaotic, but it's actually really slow and deliberate. Slashing with lighter weapons to kill monsters feels a bit more rewarding at first, especially if you're not into the series, until you realize you should embrace the big, slow, clunky weapons, and timing your strikes and dodges perfectly is when the game really clicks. Sidestepping a monster and then slamming down your axe or pike or hopping over it and mounting it, actions like that right then and there make you forget some of the jankiness or just general weirdness of the combat at times. It takes some getting used to, but once you actually get it, and I'll admit it took me a while, it's kind of awesome. I still prefer the fast weapons that let you move a bit more as a personal preference, but the heavy weapons are way more satisfying than you'd think, and it's a big point of the game as a whole. For those who don't know, Monster Hunter is all about the thrill of the hunt. Making sure your character is strong enough, getting the right buffs, armor type, upgraded weapon type, and then going out into the field, doing your research and tracking down your prey, and taking it down to make currency and use its parts to make your gear and you even stronger. That's the loop, and although it takes a minute to really get going, once it's chugging along, it'll hook in the right type of player who enjoys the thrill of a good grind. Because it's a consistently rewarding grind, and you get to kill a lot of dinosaurs in the middle of it all. It seems simple, you know, go into the environment, hunt for tracks and dung and other signs of a monster to track it down then engage in a lengthy fight to kill it. But there's a lot more going on than that control-wise and system-wise. First, there's 14 different weapon types to choose from that are all wildly different and require totally different play styles. You know, fans of the series might be a bit disappointed to see no new really weapon types added, but they're all fairly deep and they have different versions and upgrade trees within them, so it's still a lot to keep busy with. There's also how you engage your prey. You can sneak around hiding in bushes or using camouflage, sort of set traps, use the environment to help take it down or damage it or trap it. And you can mount it and clobber it over the head and capture stuff alive or dead. And even lure monsters into the lair of bigger monsters and just kind of sit back while they all fight each other Jurassic World style. Mobility is pretty awesome because when your weapon is sheathed, your hunter moves pretty quick, sprinting, sliding down hills, using his grappling hook to swing around or cross ledges and even climb vines. And it all works really well and definitely doesn't feel like a series that has been predominantly on handheld consoles. And there's more of a story focus this time around, with certain mission hunts being dedicated to advancing a storyline that will keep you fairly engaged. There, thankfully, there are some action-packed cutscenes and cool-looking characters. Even if you don't necessarily latch on to any of it all, it'll keep you moving. The story arc is lengthy, but the real meat and potatoes of Monster Hunter are the hunts and grinds themselves, the bounties and the investigations and stuff like that. There are so many systems in the game that it's kind of tough for me to sit here and break them all down for you, but I can say that these will keep you busy for a long time, especially just because the game itself is a nice, consistent challenge. Monster Hunter can usually be a pretty social affair because playing with more people helps so much because monsters can be so daunting. But thankfully, as someone who usually just kind of prefers to play sad and alone, I've been able to spend most of my monster hunting alone and still have a lot of fun. But if you want to play with friends, there's plenty of that, and that's where Monster Hunter does really shine for some fans. And Monster Hunter World gives you all sorts of ways to interact with other players, and at times it can almost look and feel like an MMO. But wailing on a monster together, using teamwork, shooting up a flare for help is pretty cool in the midst of a hunt too. But I will say, the way you search or hop in with friends in particular is pretty cumbersome and an annoying system. It's not quite like a Souls game where it's obtuse, but it makes sense. Here, it just doesn't feel quite right. But looks wise, considering it's running on a modified version of the engine that originally powered the first freaking Dead Rising game, the game looks decent. And if you're running on a PS4 Pro like we did for this video, you have the option to choose between resolution, graphics, or frame rate priorities. I love having a choice like that. Thankfully too, the environments are incredibly sprawling and there's a good variety. I'm, I'm a big fan of variety and Monster Hunter's got it. If you're bored of hunting in one location, there are plenty of other totally different places to really keep you on your toes. But I think the thing that surprised me most with Monster Hunter, like, yeah, I was focused on getting the coolest armor and the most badass sword.
sword, but I was totally blown away with how much I actually fell in love with this world. There's a lot of quirks and a lot of Japanese game design charm here that I think some people might like. From the Palico, who is kind of like your little warrior cat friend who is kind of designed as an aide and kind of a little bit as someone who is ushering in new Monster Hunter fans, but it also turns into a whole new completely other thing to customize and grind for and he's kind of just like your cool little friend. The campsites and the hub world itself tells a lot of stories just in the way it looks. You really do feel like a group of hunter people who have set out to a new world and are building up a new civilization again. And then of course there's the monsters. At first it just seems like you're just hunting a bunch of generic looking dinosaurs but the deeper you go the more you realize there's all kinds of wildlife and all different types of over-the-top looking monsters that you're gonna want to try and kill and make a hat out of. Not only that all these monsters have totally different types of behavior. Some are, some are really hostile and crazy, some run and flee, some defend their young. All different types of attacks and defense and some show damage in different ways. Part of the joy and thrill of hunting the monsters is just seeing the appreciation and creativity put into them. And every time I set out to discover a new creature, I just really look forward to it. And it's all those types of little surprises that the game keeps giving you is what made me keep going back to Monster Hunter World. In summation, this is a hard game to explain to an, a non-diehard fan, especially in a shorter form video, but Monster Hunter World is very good. From what I've gathered from like talking to fans, this is a solid entry. And for newcomers, you need to know that you may not like the combat or the dense systems, but if you're willing to put the time into the game and to really learn how it flows and where the fun is, you'll likely end up becoming a Monster Hunter fan too. But that's Monster Hunter World. Look, I know I had to gloss over some things and I couldn't cover everything like palicos or character creation, stuff like that. But I think ultimately this is a good, satisfying game. But if there is something that wasn't brought up in this video, let's talk about it down in the comments. Anything you guys got about Monster Hunter World, if you're playing it or you're a newcomer or you're a diehard, let's talk about it. If you like this video and maybe you want to see more Monster Hunter videos, clicking the like button does help us out and shows us that you want more. But if you're new, you should subscribe because we put out videos like this all the time. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.